Hi guys and welcome to Hack Explorer. In today's video, we are going to install a Kali Net Hunter on your rootless mobile. Yes, your phone does not need to be rooted. And I will be showing you at the end how to connect it for this phone from your PC in order to make it a fully working Kali Linux. So coming up next on Hack Explorer. Hi guys and today's episode we are going to install a Kali Net Hunter version on a rootless mobile. So in this demo I'm going to use my personal mobile that I use on a daily basis. It's a OnePlus 6 and I have tried this uh, version on several different mobiles and it worked well this method and hopefully you also can have fun with this one. So before installing anything you must have some prerequisites installed which are very small applications. This is like in, in order to get access to the command line of Android and get to install and download some tools and run on them i'm going to show you the guide that i'm using to install this one so this is the official kali net hunter page and it has a version called kali net hunter rootless so your phone does not need to be rooted and this edition has most of the functions enabled in that, inside that and this will be the interface that will be installing on and finally once installed you'll be getting a working linux os like this on your mobile phone where yeah, you can access it remotely or you can access it within the phone itself and use it as a daily mobile hacking station so uh, at the beginning of the installation they say to go to the net hunter store let me show you the net hunter store so i already installed it it's a very easy installation you can open your phone's browser and download the app once you get it installed you'll get an application icon like this here you have to install several different versions so for example if you go to categories that most top version you have to install termux termux is actually a linux terminal emulator it will be actually the command line interface for android you can run a version of linux here and it will give you like a command line access to the operating system so here it will be very useful to run our installation commands on this and this will be uh, the tool to start and stop net hunter because this is like a virtual machine that will be running on top of android so here actually this will be the interface to start and stop okay and after that i have uh, the kali net hunter kicks application this will be the application to make sure that you can have a vnc access or you to get the gui of the kali and in minimum you need Termux and NetHunter uh, through the Kali NetHunter app store. But Termux, remember, you can get it from the Android store also. Okay, so how do you start? So I'm going to go to my browser, mobile browser and just type uh, NetHunter plus over here and you can get the commands. This is the first one. It's very easy. Okay, and just run these commands. I hope it was like a one liner. And you have to just come here and just paste and install this one. Okay. Just give the command allow. And we are going to get wget. So this will be the tool where it will actually use to download the particular tools that you need. You can get the installation over here. Yeah. And yes, I do have do to continue. Yep. Yep, and just go to my screen, run the third command, get install. Yep, that's a long link. Copy this one and paste it here. Before this, I'm going to go. Here actually we download the file, you can actually press ls. Uh, you can see there's a script called NetHunter Termux. So this is like a working Linux. Okay, I just want to show you. So here actually this command will make sure it's executable. A chmod plus x. When you do it like this, you can see it becomes green. So which means it's executable. And finally, this will be the script that is installing our NetHunter. Well, so let's run this. Okay, yeah. So this process will be having about 1 to 2 GB of data. As I can remember, 1.5 gigabytes of data will be downloaded into your mobile phone. So make sure you have enough space. After this setup is finished, you can run Kali on your mobile. So this is the place where I pause my video and run the necessary commands after the installation. 
Now after the installation, you'll get this screen, which means your installation was successful and you are ready to start the NetHunt installation, or in our case, the Kali Linux. So it's very easy to start the Kali Linux. You just have to type one of these keywords, either NetHunter or the shortcut key is NH. So when you type NetHunter or NH, you'll go into the Kali Linux prompt. In here, actually, you can type all the Linux commands that you know. For example, let's start with a simple command ipaf config, and you can see the IP was assigned, and it takes the IP address of the phone, actually. And for example, let's try with a simple command like nmap n, and let's try to nmap Google. And let's see whether we are getting an output like the ports that are open at Google. So you can see you can run simple commands like this. Another thing that I had to show you is if you want to go into the administrative prompt, for example, Kali Linux, the new versions, it runs in the user mode. So when you're running some commands, you always try how to type sudo and type it. But if so, in order to get a root prompt, you have to type sudo su dash. So when you run this for the first time, it'll ask for the administrator password. This is where you set the password. So I'll set the password over here and you'll get the Kali Linux prompt, the root prompt actually running over here. If you want to exit it, uh, you can get the earlier prompt also. So most of the commands of Linux will run with sudo. If you have some problem, you can go back to the sudo prompt. So this is the best way to set the administrator password also. So this is the command line version of the Linux. You can easily run the commands from your phone. Another thing is if I exit the Kali prompt and I got, go back to the Termux prompt, I can actually type NetHunter kicks this actually what i'll do is actually it'll start the vnc server in order to get the graphical user interface let's go to get a kicks when you run kicks for the first time it will ask for a password now remember this password is used for login to the vnc prompt so i'll set a password over here and again verify it and you want a view only password on i don't want something like this so once it starts, you can see the VNC server actually starts at port 5901. Now, how do you access this? It's very easy. Call an application and type the password, what you have given just now. And click connect. And this will be the Kali NetHunter application running in your phone. So if I show you my phone, it's actually like this. And you're running a normal Kali version over here and you can see the things so it's very easy you can actually run applications inside this one and almost all of the application which are available will be a web browser and you'll be having a, your own Kali Linux environment inside this so if you have a bigger screen it'll be easy but fortunately you have to run from this one so my idea is now you have a Kali running Linux version the next step is how to get this more useful for example running a small graphical user with your fingers it's not easy using your mobile device as a daily driver and you can use a bigger screen for example if you're in your office or if you're at your home if you want to get connect to your Kali Linux on your phone it's very easy the only thing is you have to be on the same network to do this so let's disconnect this session if I click on this I can click disconnect from here and we are back into the prompt so if I press Ctrl and Z, you'll be getting the pump from back. First of all, configure SSH access for this one. So I'm going to access this Linux installation through my computer. Okay. In order to do that, I have to do some configuration changes. So I'll show you how to do this one. Let's go to NetHunter again. Oh, otherwise, I'll just shortcut command prompt NH. Here we have to configure the OpenSSH server. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the etc ssh and sshd underscore config this file make sure I'm using nano to configure this one nano is my favorite text editor in Linux it's very easy and I've just typed the administrator password here actually you will do several changes uh, first of all we have to make sure open ssh port is open so default port is double two but i recommend it to make it like double two double two sometimes i get the service was not running so when i put a different port it was working maybe my phone was using port 22 so that's why i am going to port double two double two another thing that you have to do a small change over here is the permit root login option because we are going to try to log in as the root 
Going to prefer, I'm going to keep this line and I'm going to say permit root login and I'm going to say the keyword yes in symbols. This will enable me to log in to my SSH session as root. You do those configuration changes? Yes. So once you configure the SSH server, you have to start it. So the command is sudo service SSH start. Run this one and you can get, you will see the starting open BST server. If you want to see if it is really started, just type status and your SSH server is running. Next, I'll give the IP information of this command because oops, I have config and you'll get the IP. So this is the IP that I have SSH to. So here at this point, your phone is running and you just open a command prompt in your computer. Uh, in a Windows computer, you, you might need an application like 2T or something. If you are using Mac or Linux, the terminal is ready to uh, connect to SSH. The command for Mac or Linux is SSH. Uh, you had to give the username. The username was Kali. At, uh, you had to give the IP address over here, 192.168.43. Three dot two four three. Okay, so I just remove this one, and that's the IP. And here to specify this port specifically. If you are on default port twenty two, this is enough. But when I specify the port separately, you have to give this one. So here, just you type the password of here this one. So it's Kali again, and you can see you have a fully operational command line inside this. So now it's very easy to run your commands okay so if i run like man something like msf console which is running actually metasploit you can get it loaded over here so this is the metasploit prompt that you can see it is running metasploit version 6 the speed of these things will depend on your phone speed but i'm i'm sure the latest mobile phones will be like running this very easily have run tmux command line separation and almost all the commands were successful uh, some of the networking commands like netstep tcp dump doesn't work over here but still you have a working linux version to do your experiments let's exit this prompt okay so next we are going to see how to get the full gui version on your desktop running from this phone so before remote accessing the kicks we have to do a small configuration by default the vnc configuration of this installation only allows a VNC connection through the local host or just from your own phone. So we have to do a small configuration in order to make sure that our remote desktop VNC client can connect to this phone's VNC server. So let's go to this. So you have to go to sudo uh, and I'm going to use the nano configuration etc and vnc.conf. Just go enter over here and just go to the last line. I hope there's a shortcut key for this one. Once you're at the end of the file, just add this line. I'll put the command in the description. So uh, let me type the configuration. It should be dollar local host equals no no and semicolon. Make sure you have the capital sense. Everything is simple over here. Control X to save save it and click Y and save the file name this configuration must otherwise you won't be able to next step that we are doing so once you do the configuration make sure you exit net hunter and make sure you restart termux and get back to this command prompt let's start mm -hmm. net hunter and get the ip address of this one mm -hmm. so i have config and we have the ip version same as earlier and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start the kex server over here so if all goes well we should have the server running like this now you have to get your vnc server i'm using a normal vnc server here one and two dot one six eight dot i'm going to type the ip 43 dot 243 and i'm going to type the port 5901 if all goes well you should get a kind of connection like this uh, i'm going to say don't want me about this one and it'll ask for the password that you have given in the kicks installation earlier so i'm going to give that password which I'm running over here and you can get a full version of Kali now this will run in the lowest settings 
so the way to configure in my machine was actually what I did was go to properties and make sure we have picture quality at the high highest version that we are here um, scaling I just keep it as it is click ok let me connect again if there's any change for this one to my ease I'll say remember your password okay um, actually I can make it full screen and I have a fully working Linux version over here so the speed of this machine will depend on your phone speed actually why I do I recommend a setup like this you can use it as a secure browser that you have installed so you can VNC into your own mobile and use your own workstation on it if you, you can install other apps and uh, especially if you are hacking this will be one of the easiest machine that you have always access to just connect to your local network and oh your um, hotspot is on you can actually connect to this VNC machine on your laptop and use it so another one method that I use is if I want to do some mal malware analysis during on the go so this will be an easy machine to open malicious side do some python coding the use cases are endless the thing is the speed again remember this is an older version of the phone the newer versions of the phone will run this very fast and I have no speed issues using the SSH connectivity versions but remember this is quite experimental but I believe if you try it and if you have any you need a machine like this this will be a solution for your problems that you have uh, again the cost savings you can always deploy one of your high processor versions on the cloud but this option is free so let me know your comments and thoughts about this particular setup and this particular approach on how to build your own portable hacking station so i hope this video was informative and you learned something from it if you have any problems comment down and i'll be happy to help you so if you like this video please give a thumbs up and if you like to see more videos like this please subscribe to this channel thank you